we've lost some people in the meantime. But we'll hope they're going to rejoin us. I hope they will. I hope they will. Hi, Eugene. I was just going to say, I don't know. Um, some of you will know Carrie Frostad. Carrie and Greg and their family were part of our congregation. Um, when did you move to Estevan, Carrie? Three years ago? Uh, yep, just about three years ago. Three years ago. So Carrie's joining us back from Regina. That's where they're living now. And uh, and she was part of our Bible study on Friday. We said, oh, come to the service on Sunday. Um, so I'm so glad that you were able to join us, Carrie. All right, I think we may have lost a few people in our transition and in our breakout time, but I hope most of us were able to come back. And so I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to gather today to talk. The United Church of Canada nationally, regionally, and in our congregations across the country is currently encouraging us to have these conversations and encouraging us to take opportunities for prayer and reflection and so i really thank you for your willingness to engage in this way and i pray that the space that we've taken today has given you some things you can continue to think about as you ponder and reflect on these difficult issues that our world is facing so let's conclude our time together knowing that our time together is never concluded when we are living out our faith in God's call. The current state of our world can leave us feeling conflicted. And that's okay, because we're not alone in the struggle. God is with us and, and we are with each other. And I know that we're going to find our way together as time goes on and as the spirit leads to that place where God is calling us. So just a final look at our scriptures today. I just invite us to think about how distressed Abraham was and how conflicted he was when he sent Hagar and Ishmael out into the wilderness to perish. And I invite us to think about how the psalmist cried out to God to rescue him from the scorn and the abuse that he faced. And I invite us to think about how Paul wrote to the believers in Rome to reassure them that as they live their lives in a Christ-like way, they are going to face persecution, but they don't have to face that without hope. And I invite us to think about Jesus' challenging words today from the gospel, reminding us that the path to discipleship is not easy. Holy conversations around difficult issues are important. And they're important for us to have with one another in our church community and as we seek God's will and God's way for our lives. Friends, this is not easy work that we're being called to do right now. But it is God's work of justice. It is the work of the gospel. It is the work of love. Amen. We're going to listen to a video now, watch a video now, our minute for mission. Sometimes you take the wrong turn in life, or someone hurts you in ways that leave deep psychological wounds. But inside this house, there is help and hope and healing. I'm a binge drinker, so um, it's either all or nothing with me. Um, and I think, I guess that's the worst type of alcohol, like alcoholic to be. But uh, 
yeah, I don't want to be that anymore. I want to break free from that. No, I was screaming for help more so than anything. But it's funny how I, it's funny how I actually everything worked out. It worked out for the best. I mean, I got where I need to be. And uh, I'm working on what I need to work on. I met some good people through here, through Still Circle. And, like, and there's some good people at churches around here. Emmanuel House is part of Stella's Circle, a United Church of Canada outreach ministry in St. John's, Newfoundland. I think the unique part is that people live here, first of all. Um, if you look at the range of services that are available to people, there, there is um, high structure and support through a hospital. Then there's, on the other extreme, maybe counseling services at a clinic. We're in between there. We don't have, we have, uh, because people live here, there, there is the 24-hour structure and support, but, w but it's more based in the community, so people have more access to the community. They have more um, ability to practice their own independent living skills. We have as part of our um, mission and, and our philosophy is a social justice-based approach with people. Um, and it's residential. We're, we, we live with people almost while they live with us. And so you get to know people in a different way than you would if you worked in a clinic where you see them for an hour a week or an hour every two weeks. I do the car and then I can add like strings into it. My life before was a mess. So going if I was coming out of this program and I, I knew that that was what I was expecting right when I got out, um, I, like there wouldn't be any growth because why, why grow if you know you're just going to land right back there. Um, so I get to start over and I get to reinvent myself and I love to like I love things like that. So um, I don't know I'm just I'm so pumped for it. I really, kind of really want to stress the importance of this program like pretty much it's, it give me a chance to put my life back together and I'm by back together, I mean build my life because it wasn't going anywhere. So I took, I had a lot of things I had to sort through, and I needed help. I couldn't do it on my own. Uh, I, I'd probably be dead if it weren't for this program. Your gifts to the Mission and Service Fund allows places like Emmanuel House to open their doors to people who need support to change their lives. Thank you, and please continue to give. Thank you, April, for that Minute for Mission, that video about Stella's place. And I think Allison had mentioned last week, too, that our GO Project, some of our youth groups, um, some of our youth who have worked with the GO Project on the East Coast have actually worked at Stella's place. So they're familiar with that ministry and its connection to the United Church of Canada. And so one of the ways we experience the fullness of life and the abundance of God's blessing is when we offer our gifts and our talents and our time to God. And so as we listen now to this, this hymn offered by Debbie Hill and Lou Moore, I invite us to think about the ways that we give back out of our blessings, give back to God's work in the world.
Amen. As we continue with the prayers of the people, we place our joys and our sorrows, our gratitude and our celebrations, our concerns and our fears into God's hands today. Let us pray. Divine caregiver, you have counted the hairs on our head and your loving eye is, is always upon us. Show us where we might move out with confidence, to speak bravely of your way of justice and love and peace, even if the consequences seem too hard to bear. We pray to you, O oh God, asking that you would grant us the courage and compassion to live for you and to live in right relations with others. Holy Sparrow Creator, you take delight in the smallest creature, and your compassion sustains all of creation. Conceive your selfless love within our hearts, and birth within us the desire to give our voice to those places where voices have been silenced. We pray to you, O oh God, asking that you would grant us the courage and compassion to live for you and to live in right relations with others. Eternal God, we have no reason to fear, for we know that in life or in death, you are always with us and we will always belong to you. Mindful of your presence, help us to live with confidence and faith, even when the future seems cloudy and uncertain. And so we pray to you, O oh God, asking that you would grant us the courage and compassion to live for you and to live in right relations with others. This we pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to move to our benediction in four voices. God tells us, do not be afraid. Jesus tells us, have no fear. Paul tells us, death no longer has dominion. The psalmist tells us, God is abounding in steadfast love. Let us go out to work in the world unafraid. Let us go to minister, knowing that God is with us. Let us go to be disciples in the newness of life. Let us go to serve with grace and strength. For wherever God leads, we go with confidence. And wherever God sends, we go with faith. Amen. Amen. And, and amen. amen. Our closing hymn is offered by April today. Number 45 and more voices, you are holy. And so following the hymn, please stay if you'd like to share in breakout spaces. Uh, if you'd like to do some further visiting with one another, we'll do that. So number 45, you are holy.
So thank you for being with us for our worship time today. Stay if you'd like to be split into some rooms and do some visiting. Um, April and we'll just have a look and see how many